Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another YouTube tutorial. I am so glad that you're here and wanting to paint with me. Uh, today we are doing this glistening river. I thought it was so pretty um, and I always love doing bokeh. So I look forward to painting this one with you guys. Um, as always, if you're not a part of my Facebook community, please head on over to Facebook after the class and just look up Samantha Anderson artist community. And that's where you can share your painting with me, um, at the end of the class. Okay. So let's go ahead and go over supplies. Make sure to say hi down below. Um, I'll be in the comments, um, chatting with you guys. So please make sure to cut like, please make sure to say hi, um, and let me know, uh, that you're here and that you're painting with me. Um, I always love seeing where everybody's from and who you're painting with. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and go on over supplies, um, the supplies, and then we'll get painting, okay? Uh, so as always, I do have a traceable available. I will not be using one um, today. I tend to not use one when things are a little bit more um, naturistic and, um, so I won't be using one. So if you want to paint along with me, that is totally um, up to you. If you are someone who likes to have a little bit more direction um, and like maybe you don't like, you know, starting your painting without anything on there, maybe that scares you. Um, or maybe you just, you want to have a little bit of direction on your canvas before we start. That is totally fine. This is one of the reasons why I provide traceables to all my patrons. Um, in my patreon so if you are one of those people and you would like some extra guidance on like just where where just the placement and where everything goes that is totally fine you can head on over to um, my patreon page i have links in the description of this event over on my patreon on my facebook um, i will also post it in the chat below you can go find it um, and it is relatively the beginning of the month uh, so now is a perfect time to join Patreon. Um, if you're painting this, uh, the day that it's coming out, if you're painting it today, um, but that if you're watching this later then that doesn't really, if you are painting it, let's see, what's the date today. If you are painting it on April 10th, it is near the beginning of the month. Um, and, uh, it's the perfect time to join the Patreon. Um, and cause you'll also get access to not only everything, uh, for this month, but also everything, uh, I've ever posted in my Patreon for that tier. So it's just $5. Um, you'll get access to this traceable, um, the traceable in a couple weeks, um, as well as quick tip videos and all sorts of, um, helpful tools for new beginners, um, as well as, um, if you want to be challenged. Um, let's see, that's, so that's the Patreon, that's the traceable. Um, again, I won't be using um, one, but if you would like to go use it, you can, um, or if you just want to paint with me, that's totally fine too. Uh, I'm using an 11 by 14 stretched canvas. I have two waters, a paper towel, a palette, palette knife for mixing. Don't worry, we're not painting with a palette knife. I, said, I know sometimes it's like, oh no, she's using a palette knife, but I'm not. Um, I just use that for mixing all of my colors ahead of time. Super, super helpful for beginners. If you are a beginner and um, you've never really painted before, 
mix your colors especially when you're doing the background mix your colors ahead of time so all you have to do is grab and go with your painting the background um, instead of painting and then having to mix and then paint and then it's dry and paint mix all your paint ahead of time it's really really helpful for beginners and i always do it when i'm doing the background so i have all my colors ready to go um, when i'm doing the background uh, so that's mainly what I use the palette knife for. It helps the wear and tear of um, your brushes. It keeps it to a minimal. It also keeps your water clean before you've even started painting. Um, and then you don't get a bunch of clumps of paint in your brush before you, you know, start painting. There's a lot of pros. Um, okay, I have paper towel. I already mentioned that. And then the types of brushes I have, if you've painted with me for any amount of time, you'll probably know these brushes by heart by now. Um, but I have a large to medium three quarter inch filbert brush. I have a small filbert brush. I have a medium sized uh, round brush that I use for texture. So it's a little bit um, shaggy. Uh, I use it for clouds, texture, anything like that. If you do not have um, your sponges for bokeh, uh, we will be using these today, but if you do not have any of those and you still want to paint today, that's totally fine. You can use a round uh, brush that is, you can use it for texture. Um, I use it my dry brushing brush, um, but that's a handful, so I usually just call it my texture brush or cloud brush. Um, that is what I will be using, um, and, I'll, and I'll be showing you. There's different types of bokeh. There's kind of the bokeh that's a little bit more blurred out. And then there's a bokeh that's a little bit more clear, which I usually use these for. Um, the thing that I love about using the sponges for is that it's so easy and kids can do it, adults can do it, beginners can do it. It's very beginner friendly and it's very, very quick. Um, so those are some of the huge pros to having these. Um, I know some people don't really like the look of it, so it's totally up to you on what you want to use. Um, but yeah, I will be using that, but I'll also show you how to do it with, um, just a regular round brush. Um, just make sure that it's a round brush that you don't necessarily care if it keeps its shape because the type of dry brushing that will happen will kind of ruin the bristles, but that's what I use this brush for. So I don't really care. Um, and then the other brushes that I have, I have two small round brushes. One's a little bit pointed, one's a little bit round. I use them for different things, different purposes. And then I have a liner brush. You probably will need a liner brush for this class because there's a lot of small um, little stems of these plants. Um, so if you don't have a liner brush, you're going to need some sort of small, either detailed brush um, or you can... you possibly if you have a nice flat brush um, you could potentially get some flat um, not flat uh, some small uh, lines with a flat brush um, so there's some there's some a couple different brushes you can use for small lines um, but if you do have if you don't have a liner brush kit um, I have one in my Amazon store go pick it up it was like ten dollars or something like that and they've been really really great um, that's pretty much all of the supplies with the exception of the colors. So let's go over that. The color palette for today's colors is very minimal. Um, so we have, I have my black, white, and brown. And when I say brown, I mean raw umber. So I have my black, my white, my raw umber. Those are in bigger tubes, so I leave them off to the side. And then for the other colors today, I have my phthalo blue, my yellow, I do have a tiny bit of orange, there will be a little bit of orange in here, um, just to warm some of that yellow up, and then I also have a pink. Um, in some of the bokeh, there's a little bit of a pink tint that we can add, totally up to you. Um, but I kind of like adding some of that, uh, some of that color in there. Um, so I'm excited just to explore some of that. Um, so yeah, uh, just a note on the, um, the types of paint I am using full body acrylics. Don't be fooled by the bottles that I have here. Uh, these are from hippie crafter acrylics. They send me free paints. Um, and I actually, I, I love them. Um, they're a super great company. They're super nice. Um, and 
um, but they do come in bottles even though it's full body acrylics so don't be confused with the craft acrylics that you might get at your local um, craft store that are soft body acrylics which are more like craft paint um, for kids this is not that this is full body acrylics they're thick um, just like your normal acrylic paints that you would use for professional stuff um, I just I, I try to always say that because some people get confused because their paint is not acting the same way as mine um, because they get the stuff in the bottle and I have a bottle but it's not the same um, so I just want to put that disclaimer out there um, I think that is pretty much it let's go ahead and get painting so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to kind of map out where everything is going. Now, if you have the traceable and you've already done this with the traceable, then you can kind of just sit back and relax. Um, or you can use this time to put it on now if you haven't already. Um, but we're going to go ahead and grab, let's see, let's grab some gray. Gray will be a nice um, color to cover up. And I think we're going to go over it with some blue um, and it'll, it'll show through. So I'm going to grab, um, actually let's do, instead of gray, let's do blue. Since we're already going to go over it kind of with like a blue wash, let's go over it with some, let's do a blue. So I'm going to grab my phthalo blue and my white. And then also a little bit of black. So I have these three colors. I'm going to create um, the wash color. And then before I put that wash on, I'm going to make a darker color that we're going to use for our, um, our outline. Okay. So first things first is we're going to make this dark color that's down here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my white out, a little bit of blue, maybe four parts white, one part blue, and one part black. It's probably the ratios that I'm going to go. And I'll probably have to adjust that, and that's totally fine. Just start with that, and then you can adjust from there. That's actually really, really close to it. The more you mix paint, the, the easier and the better you'll get. The easier it will be and the better you'll get at guessing how much of each uh, color. If you want to add one color at a time to see how it affects the paint, that's actually a really good exercise for beginners. So if you're doing the same paints that I am and you're a beginner and you don't really know how each color affects the paint that you're mixing, try adding just one color at a time. You can add the same amount that I'm adding, but add one color at a time and see how it affects the color and how these colors create the color that we're creating. So here's this color. Um, it's a bit too bright. So I'm going to tone down the saturation by adding a little bit of black. I already have white in it. So adding that black is essentially going to gray it out. We're going to take down the saturation. Saturation is how bright it is. It's essentially making it color. Um, it's the color to gray scale. All right, so that's pretty good. I'm actually going to make it a little bit darker by adding some blue and a little bit more black. And the reason I add blue and black to make it darker, because if I just added blue, it would make it darker, but it, it would also bring up the saturation. By adding the blue and the black, it makes it darker without bringing up the saturation. Okay, so this is a really good blue. We're probably going to need more than that, but just for now, just for now, I'm going to take some of this and I'm going to take a little bit of black to it and a little bit of blue, and I'm just going to make it a little bit darker over here. And I might use this later, or maybe down at the very, very bottom. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that off to the side. I'm going to grab a small round brush with a little bit of water. And the water is important for 
making it a little bit more translucent. If I just put this color on there, it's going to be a lot harder to it's going to be a lot harder to cover up. Um, so in order to um, in order to make it so that I can cover it up a little bit easier, um, I'm going to dilute it with some water. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is create my horizon. Now, my horizon is probably about one third of the, um, maybe a little bit less than one third. So I'm just going to put a little, little dot here, and I'm going to take my, just roughly, this area. And if you, um, if you don't like doing, <laughs> if you don't like doing. Um, uh, straight lines there's a couple tools that you can use you can use a ruler you can use a ruler you're allowed to use a ruler or you can use some tape now if I put this straight across I can see that my line actually isn't straight so oh, I'm gonna fix that <laughs> um, but just like any other tool whether it's tape a pencil uh, a ruler, a traceable. These things are not cheating. They are tools that we use as artists to create our colors, to create our paintings, our art. Um, so don't feel like don't feel like you can't use something because somebody said it was cheating. I've had people say to me that um, that using a traceable was cheating. But it, for me, it's just a tool. It's a tool that I use. And it's a tool that I use specifically because I don't always have the time to sit down for two hours to draw something out. Because I have three small kids and I would rather paint than draw. I like drawing, but that's not always what I want to do. I want to paint. And all of my classes are me teaching you how to paint, not draw. But sometimes it's helpful to have a tool like a traceable or a ruler or tape to use. All right, so that's my horizon. Um, I'm not really gonna put in, this is about where the trees start. I'm not really gonna put in those trees. I'm just gonna make it that line a little bit thicker just to denote that that's kind of where things are and then it kind of comes down and up so that's that's about where it is um, and then after that it comes down a little bit and I'm actually going to put in I'm gonna put in where this main um, Weed, I actually don't know, I don't remember what these are called. If you if you know what they're called, please comment down below. I don't remember. Um, but I'm going to put it so that I know kind of where everything is surrounding it. So it comes out about um, maybe a fifth of the canvas. And I say a fifth because I'm not going to use inches. Because if you're using a 9 by 12 or something bigger than an 11 by 14, your spacing is going to be different than my inches. So if I say, oh, it's about 2 inches, 2 inches on 11 by 14 is going to look different on your 9 by 12 or your 16 by 20. So when, that's why I use um, fractions versus inches when I'm when I'm trying to space things out because you might be using a different size canvas than me so what I'm going to do is I'm there's this is about a straight line until it comes to about the middle of the canvas and the great part about doing this right here is if you mess up you can get a clean brush and just wipe away anything that you don't want or if let's say you wanted to start over you could do that you could just wipe the whole thing off let's say I'm like oh, okay I don't want that I want it to come out here more or um, 
doing it this way before we put in anything um, helps you figure out where you want it. So this comes all the way up and touches the horizon line. So I'm just going to go all the way up. Okay, and that's pretty good. Just that's just so that I know kind of where everything is. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my brushes that I just used. And I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes to finish out your outlines. And while you're doing that, I'm going to go over some um, recent classes that we've been doing, um, where we're at in Patreon, um, and for our Magenta and Cobalt class. I'm really excited to share this month's classes. Um, okay, so starting off with YouTube, um, the last two weeks ago, um, we did this one. So if you want more practice on waves and bright colors and things like that, or blending sky, um, or any sort of water stuff, this was a really fun one. Really bright colors. You can change the colors. Let's say you wanted a pink and purple sky or whatever the case, this painting specifically will look really great with any sort of color combination. Um, and yeah, so if you want a little bit more practice in doing water, this was a really fun one, super simple. Um, but yeah, that one is a free one over on YouTube. So feel free to go check that out. Now in Patreon, we go a little bit more in depth with our, um, our detailing, our colors, um, how much time we spend on my painting, because here on YouTube, I'm limited to about an hour, hour and a half, two hours max. I try to keep it under two hours. However, over on Patreon, I get to spend more time with you guys. So the uh, the Friday tutorials end up usually being two to two and a half hours, as well as our Cobalt classes end up being like five hours, four to five hours, because we work week by week on our painting and we get to put more effort and more time in detail in these paintings. So um, this one will be available. It's not available yet, but it will be available this coming Friday. Um, so if you like bees and flowers or purple, look how beautiful this painting is. I love it. Um, we did this bee. Um, I say we did it um, because I already painted it for you guys. I already did the tutorial, but it's coming out um, this Friday. So if you would like to become a patron and get access to all of my Friday tutorials, it's $10 for the entire month. And you'll get access to this painting as well as every other Friday tutorial in my Patreon. So if you've been following me for any amount of time and you've wanted to uh, join at the $10 tier, uh, now is the time to do that. Um, because it's it's near the beginning of the month and you'll also get access to the lower tier of the traceable so if you're already in there for traceables um, it's only a five dollar upgrade to get access to this tutorial and i love can i just say it was kind of a happy accident but i just went with it and i absolutely love it um the purple undertones for this b i absolutely love um and this is actually uh, we did use the bokeh we used both the um, both the sponge bokeh and the, um, the brush bokeh for the background, um, to add that texture. So this is an example where you can still have soft bokeh with the sponge. It doesn't have to be hard lines with it. So it's up to you how you want to use it. But anyways, I really love this one and I'm so excited to share it with you guys, um, on Friday and I can't wait to see your guys's. Um, so that is over in Patreon. And then um, that's the $10 magenta tier. And then like I was saying for the cobalt tier, we go weekly, um, we paint weekly together. And this is where we're at with our uh, seaside cliffs. Um, I love the, the colors in this one. Um, don't mind my camera <laughs> adjusting to the colors um, because now if I show you this one, it's gonna be super pink. <laughs> my camera adjusts to it 
so this is this is closer to what the color actually is but because it's so blue it ends up adjusting the colors and it makes everything kind of pink so I apologize for that I haven't figured out how to undo that um, adjustment but see now it's everything this is like super bright anyways so those are the couple paintings that we're doing over in patreon I love the colors of this month everything is super bright and we're having a lot of fun with technique um, so feel free to head on over to patreon and join us over there okay enough about patreon um, hopefully everybody is has kind of where everything is um, they have uh, you guys all have your um, outline in and we're ready to paint um, we're going to do a wash now what I mean by a wash is we are going to um, we're going to wet our brush and do a wide brush uh, strokes with our paint and it's going to be a little bit more watery so before we do that I am going to make a little bit of a soft very very soft um, kind of peachy yellow um, for this and this is essentially going to be the wash of that first coat and I love doing washes because it allows me to have a little bit more freedom in that first coat and the majority of what I do a wash of why I do a wash is so that I can get that stark white off the canvas because sometimes it's really hard to get in all the crevices of it when I'm trying to paint really thick so if I just get in one coat of just color get all that white covered up it makes all of the rest of the coats really more enjoyable um, and a lot easier to cover up so I'm gonna go ahead and create a soft white like it's practically white but it's a little bit yellow and we're gonna have a little bit of green in here and that's fine these are all very soft muted colors so I'm gonna take this white I'm gonna take the tiniest bit of yellow and even the tiniest bit of orange it's probably too much orange to be honest yep I'm gonna take a little bit more white we can always add more Sorry, yellow. I can, I can always add more um, white to this. And I'm actually going to grab my brown because I think I might add a little bit of brown to it. I'm gonna grab brown, a little bit more white. The other thing I love about doing washes is it allows me to color mix and then fix that color mix so let's say we paint and I end up not really liking the colors like maybe it's too green or too yellow or whatever the case too blue not muted enough I can then make adjustments based off of my colors and then reapply a thicker coat in the color I actually want I remember um, sometime last year I painted a really thick coat um, and the color ended up being not as like peach as I wanted it to be but I had already done so much work on that first coat that I had a really hard time getting myself to do another coat to fix the color and do another coat um, but doing a wash it's so easy and quick so that once it dries it's so easy to fix the colors like let it dry while you're fixing colors and or creating more colors and then go over it again and then you're happier with the color okay so I have this color I'm going to I think I might add just a tiny bit more color to it so I'm gonna add the tiniest bit more brown yellow and that tiny bit of orange And do a little bit more brown and guys I'm barely touching the um, I'm barely adding any color when I add these colors there's barely anything on my palette knife when I'm adding this because the colors whenever you're mixing with white um, your colors will take over that white color it will take over 
So when you're adding, when you're mixing white colors, make sure you add the tiniest bit. Okay, so I have this really pretty um, off-white kind of brownish tan color. Um, and I think I might add more color, but I think that's fine for this first coat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my, my largest brush, and you can use a bigger brush if you want to. Um, but I'm just gonna use this. And I'm going to get it wet. And I think I'm gonna start with the top. I'm gonna start with the top. I'm gonna start with this lighter blue. And I can already tell that this is going to be too dark. Like it needs to be more grayed out. So I'm going to go into my white. We're just putting a fairly, um, a fairly translucent color. Don't worry about it being, um, don't worry about it being super thick. Don't forget the sides of your canvas. I'm going to go into this peach right here. And I'm just going to mix that area. Try to get some of this blue off of my um, brush. I'm going to rinse it out. I'm going to go into the peach color. And I'm going to mix that the best that I can. Bring that peach over a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna go into my white a little bit to help that transition. Okay, so I can see already that this is too yellow. So the next time around, I'm gonna add a little bit more brown and a little bit more orange. But I think for right now, this is, this is fine. I'm gonna go into the, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go down. And working my way down, I'm gonna go into my white. And then in order to mix that, I'm gonna go up. Now I can mix a little bit of this blue with the white if I want to. Again, if you want it to be a little bit more translucent, you can just add a little bit of water So I'm just mixing that up into that white. And then I'm just gonna slowly add this whitish one down. I'm gonna go more into that dark blue. See how I'm being like really rough? Like it's really, don't worry about it being super smooth. But the more you go over it, the smoother it's going to be. The more blended it's going to be. All right, I'm gonna go a little heavier on the paint. And I'm really trying to work it into all the crevices. I'm gonna go up. And then after I mix that, I'm gonna go all the way across, blend it out. 
And you'll notice that I'm kind of going at a slight angle. I'm going to go into this darker color. See how I'm really trying to work it into the canvas? That's part of what this process is doing. Because sometimes that's hard to do it when you're trying to also think about blending and also think about smoothing it out and it can get overwhelming when you're trying to do all these things at once. do the bottom let's not forget about that really working on covering up all of that white it's my main goal in this Right. it already looks good the one thing that I notice with the the yellow is that it's not like brown and orange enough the tone is a little bit too yellow um, and then the other thing I notice is that the blue needs to be a little bit more gray particularly up here and so I will now I will make those adjustments. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out my brush. And one thing to know is that for the sky, make sure that you do have a little bit of that light yellow white above the trees because that will make them stand out more when we do put them in because um, in the reference, they are on the darker side. But if you put blue behind it, then they won't stick out. They won't, um, they won't stick out as much um, in the contrast of it all. So make sure that you do have um, just kind of that little bit of um, swelling with the, uh, the yellow, the white coming all the way um, over here. Um, yeah, other than that, I, I like my colors. I think they're really pretty. I do think they need to be grayed out a little bit. And when I come down and I do a second coat, I'm going to bring the yellow and white down just a bit. Um, I started off with the blue just a little bit too soon. I should have come down with white a little bit more. Um, so that's, that's such a good thing for beginners um, when you're painting is to do this stage. This is technically, um, for this one, it's technically the ugly stage. Like things aren't really what the, you want them to be. Um, things are kind of out of place. Um, things are not finished. You're nowhere clear. You're nowhere close to being done. But this is such a good process because it allows you to make adjustments in your painting um, without being like, well, this is how I paint it. I guess this is how it's going to be. Um, and I feel like when I first started painting, 
I just had to go with it because I felt like once it was on the canvas, I couldn't really adjust it or I didn't know how. Doing a light coat of paint. Now granted, this is a little bit thicker than I normally do for a wash. Um, but all that being said, like doing this sort of wash, doing this sort of coat really allows you to take a step back and analyze your colors and make adjustments so that you'll end up liking your painting more. Um, and it also allows you to grow um, as an artist being able to adjust those colors and being able to look at your colors a little bit more critically and being like, okay, these colors are good. If they stayed this way, I would still like it. But how do I make them better? What can I change? Um, with the yellow. I'm like, okay, it needs to be a little bit duller, a little bit browner, a little bit less yellow. So I'm going to, I'm going to have it cut out, cut out that yellow by adding the other two colors. Um, and with, and with the blue, it's like, okay, it needs to be a little bit grayer. So I'm going to add a little bit of that black. Um, and the top is a little bit even too dark. So I'm going to add more white to brighten that up. So those are the adjustments that you can make by doing a first coat like this and being able to adjust your colors. Okay, so let's go ahead and create more like this. So I have this yellow. Um, my colors are already um, drying, so I'm going to move these colors off to the side real quick so I can adjust them over there because all of this stuff, this is really, really important. When you're working with a flat palette and you're working with colors that end up drying, do not remix your colors onto the same thing because all of this has dried. And if you paint, if you get this wet, all of this dry paint, that's gonna get all clumpy, it's gonna get in your nice clean new paint and then you're gonna have that clumpy paint in your paint as you're trying to make these smooth waves and nice little sky um, just clean your palette clean it up a little bit that's one of the things why I love having this glass palette because even in a class I'm in the middle of a class right now and I can adjust I can adjust this. So now that I have these colors back up, I'll just leave that one over there. Now I have these new colors that I can work with. Um, I know that I need to add a little bit of black. So I need to recreate the colors. So if you would like to, just so that you can see the differences, you can mix your colors um, in a different spot than your previous colors. So for instance, if this is my color, and I don't have a whole lot of it, so I'll end up just mixing that in, but I wanna adjust my colors without mixing into it because then I don't know where I'm coming from. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab more paint so I can mix these together. I'm gonna, oop, that was a lot of blue. I do not need that much blue. It came out so fast. Um, that's actually one of the things I love about using these Hippie Crafter bottles is because I can literally just take it and put it back in the bottle. I can't do that with the tubes and it's like one of my favorite things because I often will squeeze out too much and then I'm like, uh, I can't put this back and then I end up wasting it. But now I don't do that anymore because Hippie Crafter has cool bottles. Um, okay, um, so I'm going to get out this blue um, and black and I need a good amount of white. Okay, um, it's a bit much, but it'll probably be fine. Um, so I already have my black, my blue, and I'm just gonna mix up my white, see where it mixes to. Remember that this is the color I used before, and I'm kind of trying to adjust the color, so but I, would, I did want a little bit more than I had before, which is why I have so much. I'm gonna mix this all together. Okay, so here it's a bit lighter. Um, now I'm gonna 
gonna add a little bit more black to this to make it grayer. I think I need even more black. So I'm gonna do black, a little bit more black and a little bit more white. Okay, so this is the color it was before, and this is the color it is now. Um, it looks less diluted in the camera than it is. It's pretty, um, it's pretty grayed out, which is good. Um, and then I'm going to adjust this and do it even more. just so I have something else to pull from if um, if I need something that's a little bit lighter and more, um, more grayed out. I can just pull from a little bit of this kind of blue gray. I have a feeling it's somewhere in between here, but I think that works. And then um, I'm gonna pull a little bit of this color to make it that darker blue and black. Okay, this is pretty much the same exact color. So I'm just going to take a little bit more black and add it to gray it out a bit. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more white to it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this off. And we're gonna create our, uh, our yellow color. It's so funny because I look at this color on the gray palette and it looks exactly like what I need, but when I put it on the canvas, it was a, it, it is a little bit too, too yellow. So I'm gonna take I put just a little bit on the side just so I have a reference of what it was. I'm gonna take a little bit of this brown and a tiny bit of orange. A little bit more white. I'm gonna take a little bit more brown to it. And I think I actually might need a tiny bit of black just to kind of gray it out. Okay, so I think that's a good color. It just needs to be whiter. It's a little bit more white. Not as dark. I'm gonna put another pile of white because this white is tainted with all 
the colors <laughs> and if I put that in here it's got blue in it and it will make it like green and so I don't want to do that um so this is a little bit more tan I think I'm going to add even more brown and black to it I think this is a better color. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and make an in-between color. So now this is the color that's gonna go between the blue sky and the yellowy orange sky. And I think, yeah. Um, so I'm gonna take some of this and having a transition color is really important for blending if you're particularly not very good at it. Um, but sometimes it's it's helpful for even me to have it. Um, so it's not a sign that you're not good at something. It's it's mostly just a sign that you prepare. <laughs> and, you know, um, so I'm going to go ahead and take um, my tan color and my gray-blue color that's over here. And I'm going to mix that together and it's going to come out like the slightest bit kind of like grayish green and that is totally okay it's actually less green than i anticipated which i think is totally fine so now we have a transitional color so now we know um, that we can pull from it when we're going in our tent and we'll use a little bit of that down here too okay let's go ahead and do our um our second coat i'm going to start in the same spot this should all be dry now so hopefully that's all dry for you um we're going to go over we're going to do the same thing top um top right corner to the left horizon and then left horizon to the bottom corner and do the same thing. I'm going to grab this dark gray blue. And I just think that that's going to be a better color. And this time around, we are not going to use very much water because we already have that white. We already have that white um, out of here. And so we don't need to, um, we don't need to cover any of that up. So I'm going to use very, very little, if at all, of my, um, of my, my water. So I'm putting these two colors and then I'm just going to blend. I know it kind of looks scary, huh? I'm going to put those two colors and then I'm going to blend. I'm going to go back and forth, blend that together. And then you go all the way across. Now I'm going to rinse out my brush. And I'm going to go into that bright color. And I'm going to put this bright color all along here. So that there's a little strip here and what this is going to do this is going to allow me to get that color on here you can blend it down if you need to but now i'm going to take this and i'm going to go up into it and i'm going to blend this together you see that just go right into it And now that that's all colored, I'm going to go across the whole thing and blend it all in. The, the more you go over it, the more it's going to blend together. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this white 
at the very bottom and then I'm going to go back into this tan and then I'm going to do the same thing blend it together And because we're not dealing with that bright white background behind it, our colors are gonna end up being more true to what we want them because when you put a color on a white canvas, it ends up being a lot brighter than if you put a color on an already tainted other, you know, already colored canvas. All right, so that is really great. I'm really liking how that is coming out. I'm going to add a little bit of white. While this is still wet, I'm going to add a little bit of white to the bottom here. Um, and I think that is looking great. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing except working from the bottom down. Now keep in mind that for me, I came down, I came up too much, like I started my blue a little bit too soon. So there's gonna be a big change in my painting um, because I'm gonna bring all this light down a lot further. So I'm gonna go ahead um, and I'm gonna go ahead and start with this. I'm gonna start with the white right here. And then I'm gonna go into this tan. And whenever I add a new color, I'm adding it right below that color so that I can go and blend it into the prior color. That's the trick. I'm gonna take this. actually go into my white because this is already a little bit too dark for me. I'm going to go into my white and lighten it up. So I'm going to go ahead and take this gray, this gray blue that we created, and I'm going to put it right here. And I'm going to go in with some white. And we're just going to mix that in to that gray blue. And once you get that line across, you can come back with your brush and brush it up into If you need a tiny bit of water to help you blend, that's totally fine too. And through this whole process, I am really trying to go up and down, or sorry, uh, across, like across in about this angle. So I'm gonna grab this gray blue again. 
it's so funny because it looks it's not really gray blue when you put it on the canvas and then we're going to go into that gray blue the the sorry the more of the actual gray And this is where you can have a little bit more streaks. It doesn't have to be as, um, um, it doesn't have to be as blended. You can even put in a couple streaks here at this point. And actually I highly recommend doing that. Just don't blend it all the way. I'm gonna go ahead and put in this other blue down here. I'm gonna put the dark, the darkest blue at the very bottom, and then the other, other blue, like my lighter, my lighter blue into my um, darker blue. And then while this is still wet, you're going to want to add these different colors with your brush. You can add the tan. So I'm just lightly adding some of these colors. You can either come in, you can also come in with the dark. And I haven't switched brushes. I'm still using this. Um, If you find it's not going on very easily, try to grab a little bit of water. Anywhere where there is a dark one, there's going to be a light one right above it. about right here on the left is going to be that really bright um, the really bright thing um, so right where that is if you want to add a little bit of the brighter colors to your um, to your tan.
I'm going to add a little bit of white to this and add a little bit of highlight. And you're just going to keep if it comes off like that and it's not blending in, just take just take a finger and run over it. It'll blend it in just ever so slightly. Who said we can't finger paint? Not me. I'm just brushing it out a little bit. And we'll come we'll come back and actually add it a bit brighter. Same with this right here with it being white. All right. While this is all drying, I'm going to go ahead and take some white and put it at the very bottom here and then I'm going to take a little bit of blue and put it right on top of that We are at a good spot. Um, a little bit of water on my brush with a tiny bit of a light color and so I'm just adding um, I'm just adding some some more highlighters highlights in the water I think I just need to be a little bit bolder with my colors.
Okay, we are doing great. All right, so the next step would be to put in our bokeh. So let's go ahead and um, rinse out any brushes that you may have and make sure you check the sides and make sure that you got any um, any sides that need to be done. I missed a side over here. Sorry, I could get lost in this process, but we do need to move on. Um, okay. It's very relaxing to add these, <laughs> this element of it. Okay. All my brushes are um, mixed out. I'm going to go ahead and clear off some of this space. So that we have some space to work with our bokeh effect. Um, I'm going to create three different colors. One's going to be a white, one's going to be a little bit more yellow, another one's going to be a little bit more of a pink. Um, so I'm going to use this kind of peachy color that we've been using for the, um, for the kind of peachy pink color and the yellow color. I'm just going to put them in two different sections. I'm going to add um, white to both of them. And on one, I'm going to add the tiniest bit of pink. And the other one, I'm going to add the tiniest bit of yellow. So again, I'm just using that tan peach color that we've that we were using for the um, that we're using for this area, and I'm just adding different shades to it. I'm gonna add more white to the pink one. I'm also gonna add a touch of orange along with the pink. And then we're going to have our plain white. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple fuzzy ones. Um, there's three different ways that you can do bokeh. You can do a fuzzy one with a, um, a large to medium sized uh, just uh, round brush. And I'll show you how. I'm just going to get a little bit. I'm not going to get it wet yet. Just get a little bit of white, like barely any on it. And if you want, you can start over um, on the side and you're just going to start in the circle, start in, in the middle somewhere and just move, try to keep the, the tip of your brush in the same spot. That's key for this. So you're gonna, I'm gonna do it again here. I'm gonna keep the tip of my brush in the same spot and I'm going to move my actual brush 
around the tip. And that's going to create a nice, a nice, very soft bokeh. I'm going to do a couple more white ones over here. And if you want it a little bit bigger, you can just do a little bit bigger circles and that will kind of widen it. I'm going to go in with a little bit more of the pink ones. That one's really nice. And the darker, the, the longer you do it, the darker it becomes. So just keep that in mind. You can make them different. Um, you can make them different sizes. You can make them different sizes, you can make them different um, uh, like differently, like they don't have to be all um, hard, like hard colors. So that's how you do it um, without, if you wanted to create bokeh without um, without the, these things, whatever they're called, the, the sponges, the sponge droppers. Um, if you want something that's a little bit more um, with a hard edge, you're gonna grab your, um, that, and you still don't have a bokeh, or you still don't have a sponge. Take a filbert, whatever this is called. I'm like, my words are just like not coming to me right now. Um, take your small filbert and I'll show you um, with a little bit of the pink one, you're going to grab your um, brush. You're going to grab just the tiniest bit of water, barely any water, but you do want a little bit of flow. So you're going to really work it into the brush on one of the sides. And then you're going to take this and you're going to, just like we kept the middle of the brush, uh, the, the point of the brush in the middle, we're going to keep one side of this brush in one spot. So I'm just going to keep it in one spot. And there you have. And if it's not as round as you hoped it would be, you can go again and make it a little bit bigger. Or you can do your best to just adjust the circle as needed, or you can leave it like that, totally up to you. But that's how I would do it without. It just takes a lot longer to do it that way. Um, now, before we go any further, um, I did remember that we do need to do the background bushes before because um, some of these bokeh are in front of the um, the trees, and I realized that after I started putting them on. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that um, gray. I'm going to actually just use this black, and I'm going to add a little bit of this blue-gray and a little bit of this brown to kind of just make a muted black. And I'm just going to put this on here. And it's okay if it's a little bit blurry because that's how it is in the picture. If you want it to be less blurry, um, then you're just going to be
be a little bit more intentional with how much paint is on your um, your brush. I need a little bit more black to make this an accurate amount of Okay, so we have more black and I'm gonna mix together Again, I'm gonna do a little bit of this blue and a little bit of this brown to kind of make it a little bit of a muted black And I'm going to dab my brush. Actually, I'm going to use a different brush because this is typically the one that I use for my, um, my trees. For this part of it you're just going to dab the first thing you're going to do is make sure that you cover up all of your if you put in trees before you're going to make sure that you um, cover up all of that And for the tops of it, I am just kind of dabbing some texture. And if it starts becoming fuzzy, then you need a little bit more paint on your on your brush. So now I'm going to go, I'm actually going to turn it upside down so that I can get a better um, straight line. And I'm going to go 
go right here. And before it dries, I'm going to take a clean brush or a rinsed out brush and I'm going to just fix this line. I'm going to go ahead and take this pink and add just a tiny bit of brown to it. Maybe a little bit of orange. I'm trying to create the color that um, will go right there. And I'm going to create the top of this bush and I'm just going to dab my brush all the way across kind of just let let it create itself I do think I need a little bit more. While that dries, I'm going to go ahead and put in this white area right here. And I am seeing a slight problem, so let me see if you can notice it. It has to do with this side of the canvas and where the reflections are. So this is where my reflection is here, so theoretically this should be over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move, I'm going to move this to the side a little bit so that Um, this makes more sense.
And we'll have to do a couple coats of um, that specifically. A bright yellow orange to go on um, next to the white portions. go ahead and put in um, this white section right here. As I go out, I'm going to add this orange color. So I'm just going to pull that up a little bit and as that dries I'll add a little bit more um, white to whiten it up just a little bit more. Alright so now that that is pretty much done I'm going to do one more coat of the white up top because I think that's dry enough for it. Like that and then I'll add more white down here to kind of look the same and then I am going to add a white dot right here like that and that'll get brighter all right so let's go back to adding our our bokeh I'm going to get some of my um, my sponges and I'm going to add just the tiniest bit of water. I'm going to do a couple big ones. Now 
And you can do it light or you can push really hard and do um, more concentrated ones. Or you can go over the same one a couple times and make it um, brighter or thicker. Like that. I'm going to go to the smaller one that I have. And I'm gonna, I think this is the smallest one I have. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go into my white first. And do a couple small ones. Remember, if you want a little bit more translucent, you can have a little bit more water. Not too much, but I'll have a little bit more water on it. Do a couple yellow ones over here. Do some more white ones, some thick white ones. You can also do some, um, if you don't want it so um, rigid, if you put your brush on it and then just go in little bitty circles, that's the same as using the round brush for it. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple small ones just with my brush. So as you can see, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I think I'm going to do a couple more bright white ones in this area. That's good, and I like how that's coming out. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my um, my 
not leaves. Um, they're not cattails, but I'm just going to call them weeds. <laughs> but they're pretty weeds. <laughs> so I'm going to come down here. And what's nice about this style of weed is that it is a thick um, stem. So if it's a little bit wiggly like mine is, you can just get really close to the canvas, go your own speed, and make it a clean line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in. This is the one that goes all the way up here, but there's other ones that go um, up further. I'm just going to come down here and put in these little guys. It's almost like a palm frond in a way. Some of these come down a little bit further than others. I'm just kind of noting where the certain ones fall. And it doesn't have to look exactly like the picture. That is one thing for sure. Now these other ones can come a little bit um, they don't have to come they don't have to be as black so it can be a little bit more uh, maybe diluted. And again, just like every time before, if you end up making a line that you don't like, you can kind of erase it in a sense. As long as what's behind it is dry. It's not considered permanent, right? Until it dries.
just going to put generally where everything kind of sits on these. I'm going to grab this kind of tannish yellow and I'm going to put that down first, especially for the ones that are over here and in that sun. For over here, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit more white. We're doing all of the behind first. So get whatever brush um, that you want. I'm gonna use my um, I'm gonna use my filbert, my small filbert. And I'm just going to put in some of this. And I'm just kind of trying to angle it as best as I can. So that's pretty much it. Now what I'm going to do um, is grab some of this um, brownish black that I created for the background. Got some brown, a little bit of blue. Ooh, a little too hard. And I'm gonna grab a fan brush. If you don't have a fan brush, you can use any old um, brush that you might have. And I'm going to add on this.
I am going to come back behind it and give it a little bit of shape, particularly near the edges. But this is going to get the bulk of that color on. And remember that I'm not you're not going to go all the way to the edge. You're going to leave a little bit of space for where the stem comes out and then it starts. So I'm adding it a little bit like a palm frond in that like everything kind of fans out a little bit. And in the back, I'm just going to add a little bit of detail. So I'm going to take a liner brush and this is going to be the detail part. You can go all out with this or you can, um, you can, um, you know, it's kind of up to you what you want to add. Um, first things first is I'm going to add a couple more stems. Down at the bottom. Um, but in regards to here, um, there it's like a bunch of little V's. So at the edge of everything, you can add little V's. And that will add just enough detail. dropped my brush see how it adds just 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 enough detail that your mind kind of fills in all the gaps with the rest of it so I'm just adding little tiny bits let me let me zoom in a little bit So with this, I'm just adding little, little kind of crossing V's, almost like you would if you were like braiding a bit. Just enough to add a little bit of detail. You can add little Pokey's coming out too. Just one at a time. You don't have to do all of them, but just enough. 
And then if you want to come back in with your white you can also do that. break up some of this black all right that is pretty much it I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more white over here to the left Just very gently brush it in, kind of blend it in a little bit. I'm gonna do I really want some starbursts in here if you've never done a starburst they look so cool um, I'm gonna grab my liner brush I'm gonna grab my liner brush and I'm gonna add a little bit more um, just sparkly detail to the um, to the water by adding a couple lines. And then I'm also gonna add some starburst. So grab some white, grab a little bit of water, and then we're just gonna go up, down, over, over. And then you can make an X if you want to as well. You just have to make sure that they are really, really thin. and that is looking pretty good. I'm gonna put another layer of white because I think it can be even whiter. And again, I'm just gonna put this layer in, kind of blend it in the best that I can. I'm just barely touching the canvas. And I think I'm going to do one more coat of it just so that it's a solid color. And I'm going to put a couple more dots. I'm going to turn my, I'm just adding detail at this point. I'm going to turn over my um, 
um, my my brush and use the um, the other side of it. which tells me that this can also be brighter. And at this point, I'm gonna go straight over the black lines. And I'm gonna dip my brush in some water so that it kind of blends the outer edge of it. You can put a couple right next to each other. also put a couple out not right close to it on maybe some of the lighter spots so anywhere where you see like something that's a little bit lighter And if you mess up like I did a little bit, just grab a clean brush And there's going to be more starbursts over on the right side than there are the left. If you want to add your starbursts. I like them. I think it looks like the water is sparkling. And I think it looks really cool. So you can work on this for as long as you want and add as many starbursts or um, details as you want. As you can see, you can really get lost in the process. Um, really, really fun concept. I love the bokeh. I love starbursts and all the stuff um, related to it. I'm going to do one more quick coat of this just to make it flat and over here flat all right and we are all done Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you being here um, and painting with me. I can't wait for uh, our next one. It's in two weeks and we're doing a purple galaxy 
um, sky and that's just gonna be really cool with colors if you painted this with me obviously you're here you made it to the end if you did paint it with me or if you plan to paint it with me please make sure to go over uh, to my Facebook page and share it with me I love seeing um, all of your guys's paintings and this was such a fun one so um, I look forward to seeing your version of it okay we will see you then we'll see you in a couple weeks uh, for our purple galaxy and uh, yeah have a great rest of your evening bye guys